In this video, I will introduce Stirling's approximation. The natural logarithm of x factorial is approximately equal to x times ln x minus x. This approximation can be derived using this graph. We will use an integral to approximate a sum. If we look at this function curve, this is ln x. ln1 is 0. Ln2 is 0.7 roughly, Ln3 is roughly 1.1, Ln4 is roughly 1.4, and so on. So if we look at this uh, area under this Ln x curve, this is the integral of Ln x from 1 to 8. And then we can actually look at the uh, blue bars. We want to say the total area of the blue bars is approximately the same as the integral value of ln x. So this blue bar has a height of 0 because ln1 is 0. ln2 is 0.7, so we have 0.7 times 1 here. And then ln3 is 1.1, you have 1.1 times 1 as the area of this blue bar. And then this one is ln4 times 1, ln5, ln6, ln7. So really the sum of ln1, ln2 all the way to ln7 can be approximated as the integral of ln x from 1 to 8. So you can see, of course, there's error. The gray areas correspond to the error. That's not accounted for. But when x is bigger, in this case, x equals 23. And then you can see the blue bars uh, can be used to approximate the integral of this ln x and vice versa. So again, when x is large, we can use this approximation. And then here's the proof. ln x factorial, that's uh, the sum of ln1, ln2, all the way to ln x. We will uh, just uh, use this uh, integral to approximate the sum here. So we're integrating this uh, ln i, the i from uh, 1 to x. And the integral of ln i is i times ln i minus i. You can easily verify this by taking the first derivative of this function. So when you take the first derivative of this function, you have to use the product rule in calculus. The derivative of this part is ln i plus i times 1 over i and then minus 1. So uh, the result is ln i. All right, and then we plug in the lower limit and the upper limit. And uh, the lower limit is 1, the upper limit is x. We plug them in. We get out x, ln x minus x plus 1. Again, when x is large, this part is much larger than 1, and then we have this approximation. So we actually made two approximations in the derivation. The first is here. We use an integral to approximate a sum. And second, we eliminate this one, assuming x is much larger than 1. And then we can use this uh, approximation when x is larger. This is so-called Stirling approximation. And there is a much more accurate approximation that contains many more terms. You can include this term. This is uh, the natural logarithm of the square root of 2 pi x. If you have the initial uh, proved uh, Stirling approximation here plus the third term, you will get a much uh, accurate approximation. And further, you can make it even more accurate by adding uh, some more terms uh, over here. But over here, you can usually stop here because uh, even if x is small, uh, this approximation is uh, negligible. All right, but then how good is this? How good is this uh, uh, starting appro approximation that contains only two terms, L and x times x minus x. Uh, let me show you a table here. All right, so this is the value of x. So it's 2 to the power of 1, 2 to the power of 2, all the way 2 to the power of 7. And we're computing this uh, uh, ln x factorial. So those are the exact values. Now we're going to make approximations. We'll use x times ln x minus x. We got this uh, numbers. And then we use the approximation divided by the exact value. So as long as the ratio is close to 1, we say the approximation is good, is accurate. So let's look at the first one. The first one is horrible. You get a, even a negative number. Uh, when 
x equals 4. It's getting better. The ratio is nearly 50%. And then when x equals 8, we have a much better uh, uh, approximation. So the percent error is less than 20%. And then when x equals 16, we are approaching uh, 1. So this is 0.925 already. When x equals 128, you can see the ratio between the approximation and the exact value becomes uh, 0.993. The error percent is less than one percentage point. So what if we include another term? Uh, this is actually the natural logarithm of the square root of 2 pi x. I just take this uh, 2 pi x to the power of uh, 1 half. We just take the 1 half in front of the natural logarithm. Again, we have the exact values here. We have the approximation here. And this, t this time, we have the third term. Again, x is from 2 to the power of 1 to 2 to the power of 7. So let's look at ratio. Even when x equals 2, look at the ratio. When x equals 2, the ratio is really close to 1 already. It's 94%. The percent error is only 6%. When x equals 4, it's 99%. When x equals 8, well, you have a percent error smaller than 0.1 percent it's really really accurate already and then when x equals 64 and 128 you can see the percent error is negligible so it seems that we need to include the third term to have really accurate approximation but really it depends if x is large enough we don't have to include this uh natural logarithm of the square root of 2 pi x uh, this is because the percent error of this approximation with only two terms is roughly 1 over x. So what does that mean? If x equals 1,000, we expect the percent error to be only 0.1%. So I used Wolfram Alpha to compute this uh, ratio here. Again, on top, this is my approximation, ln x times x minus x divided by ln x factorial, and x is 1,000. Look at this. The percent error is pretty small. So what if uh, x equals 1 million? Again, using Wolfram Alpha, you can see if x equals 1 million, uh, the ratio is 0 0.999994. You have six nines here. So again, the percent error is uh, negligible when x equals 1 million or even 1,000. And in the future, when we uh, deal with statistical thermodynamics, x is usually uh, one mole. 6 times 10 to the power of 23. So the error is rough. The error is uh, the relative error is probably one over uh, 10 to the power of 24. So that's definitely negligible.